I was contacted by colleagues at Jamestown Rediscovery and asked if I could help with the um, authentication and dating of a box that was discovered here archaeologically. It is silver and since that's my area of specialty, I was asked if I could look at it from the standpoint of construction, metal quality, and overall design and see if I could help place it in time and space. Interestingly, I, I felt very strongly from the beginning that it was probably not of English origin because English silver has a very consistent uh, structure of hallmarking or um, striking little symbols on silver objects. So if it was English manufacture, I would have expected it to be marked. I'm very fortunate to work at Colonial Williamsburg with a number of very talented colleagues, including a woman named Kirsten Moffat, who is our analytical conservator. Kirsten was able to use a technique called non-destructive dispersive x-ray fluorescence, or XRF, to analyze the metal content of this box and determine at an elemental level what its composition is. Um, and interestingly enough, the readouts that she obtained confirmed that it is most likely of continental origin. Kirsten was able to determine that the silver content is actually about 84 percent. That's more typical of the working practices that you would find on the continent, especially in countries like modern-day Germany and what is now the Netherlands, um, as opposed to England where the working practices dictated a system of um, allo alloying or mixing metal to a standard of at least 92.5 percent silver. The box is incredibly well made. It has a slide mechanism here that would allow you to open the lid. This little piece just slides right out, or would have. It can't be opened because, of course, um, it has been sort of frozen in place due to its archaeological context, and no one wants to destroy any evidence by risking the opening of it. Uh, the sliding lid has um, a letter M that is lightly scratched into the surface of the lid. And the ends um, both have markings, what appear to be the feathering or fletchings from an arrow on one end and a series of marks on the other, all of which appear to be um, more likely scratched, purposefully scratched in place rather than engraved, suggesting that it was done by an individual or perhaps several individuals who may have owned the box subsequent to its manufacture. I think what intrigues me most about this box is that it is really an object of everyday life. It's not something that was made to be especially ostentatious or showy. It's not overly decorative. Um, it doesn't have great ambitions or pretensions in terms of the way it was made. These simple objects simply don't survive. Um, they are actually, I think, in many respects, rarer than the bejeweled great pieces that survive in so many museum collections.